Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, this video is, kind of, is going to be aimed more toward gleaner combine owners because I'm going to take and post a link for this video in a couple gleaner combine Facebook groups. And so, but anyway, just wanted to show you some things that I've done on this combine. It's on the R72. And uh, we got this combine in 2018. And um, we had a lot of trouble running a 35-foot platform with uh, wanting, wanting to plug the throat right back here at the back where the throat goes in, into the machine. And then it begins the transition between the lower feeder house and upper feeder house chains. And um, so if I remember right, is in 2019... we put a, um, a, a feeder floor kit in, and you can actually see the new metal right there, that gray. And what it did, if I can get my light to stick, is back here at the back of the feeder, of the throat floor, it actually lowered that some. You can see right there we, where, where we cut that, pushed the floor lower, and um, to open it up right there, And that's actually called the Dan Hurt Feeder Floor mod Modification. And right here is that information. That's actually the instruction, one of the instruction pages I got. And um, it worked great. In fact, it actually works so well, I put the same kit into the R52 as well. But like I say, it takes and it lowers the back of the throat floor and then I want to take and crawl up underneath right here and show you behind the hydro what it does is it takes that big hump that is in the floor and removes that okay I gotta get up underneath here I'm trying to crawl around on my creeper okay that should work for now I guess And of course, right there's your hydro drive, all right there. But um, okay, you can see where you can see the new floor that we put in, three of three, and how it just simply comes in. Let me get further in here. There we go. How it just simply comes in, and then angles, and then goes straight up over top of my head up to the rotor. Whereas with the old floor from the factory, there was a hump right here that caused the choke point right beneath the upper, the front drum of the upper feeder house chain. And so we took all, took all that, cut, cut all the old floor out. You can see right there's the line. And then you, then you just simply lay the new floor on top of the old and weld it in. And so, yeah, like I say, doing that made a world of difference. It opened it up, and then the drum inside here, I dropped it from an 8-inch diameter down to a 7-inch, and they call it a posi drum. It's kind of like a triangular-shaped drum. And so total uh, room, I guess you could call it, I probably gained about uh, anywhere from 2.5 to 3 inches in there additional clearance and so yeah it really made a giant difference in feeding and um, running a 35 foot bean head but yeah like I said that's the Dan Hurt floor modification get the light up in here there we go But like I say, it worked great. Let me get my light back out from underneath here and I'll take you up and show you the router. And so after doing that,
And like I say, we're running an 8200-35 platform. But after doing that, particularly in green stems and green stem soybeans, where the soybean is dry, but the stem is green, you're getting it in, into some pretty tough conditions. It's like doing rope. And so, jump back up here in the back of this thing. And yeah, I actually combined rye. And if you've been on my channel for a while, I got some videos of that posted. But what I did, back here, up here in the rotor cage, is um, I took the rotor out, which is that thing right there. Yeah, there's the rasp bars. Pulled the rotor out and um, did, a, did a lot of work inside the cage. And one of the big things I did was with the helical bars, which is... There we are. Gotta get my light hung up. These bars right here. That one, that one, right here's another one. And I took out the old factory ones and put in what's called steep pitched. And um, uh, what that does is right here, from, this here's your concave, where, all the, where about 90% of, of your threshing is being done. From this side over to that side. This right here is your throat coming up from the head. So what I did is um, put in the steep pitched and they start clear over at that side. What that does is as your crop mat comes up and goes over the concave here, it comes up and it immediately transitions over to this side of the cage. With the old factory setup, what you get into is the way that the, 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 the pitch that the helicals run, it allows approximately half from about right here to over here, this half of crop mat to come up, transition over to the separating side of the cage. The right hand half over on that side from here over to the end literally goes up and actually has to go around again to go out to transition. Well, for one thing, it takes, that, that takes additional horsepower and um, it cuts down your capacity. And actually on the newer Gleaner Combines, steep pitched helical bars come standard from the factory. And so um, I put all these in here and that really made a difference in green stem soybeans. I also took, and um, I'm trying to see if I can find one here. On the rotor drum itself, and installed, right there's one. You can kind of see it right down through there. There's one. That You see that paddle? They call that a, um, a Sunny Brook Sweet Set. And basically what it does is it just helps to transition everything through. I also took, and on these rasp bars, I took all the old factory ones out and put in um, what's called a, um, a hardened surfaced trimp bar. And it's just, an, it's actually an old bar that has been rebuilt with tungsten. They last a whole lot longer. They always have a rough edge, kind of like a sandpaper edge, and so they grab stuff and they, they help pull it through to transition over. And, of course, all the trash goes out through the chopper, which is actually that shaft right there. The chopper sits right behind this wall. And so um, I, took, I, I put all the hardened surfaced trimp bars in. Which uh, there's a guy, there, the, the, the guy that does that is out of Seymour, Indiana. And so I did that. And like I say, I put that Sunny Brook sweep set on. There's actually a sweep here, here, and one right down here at this end. And they're actually in every other space between the rasp bars. So there's one here, 
nothing here in this section right here, and then the next roll between the next two rows of rasp bars. And then um, down here on this end, if I can get my light to stick, I had a couple, several guys suggest it to me to put in what's called a corn dam. And it's just a chunk of helical bar running straight up and down. It just helps it helps to kind of slow stuff down. It helps, it helps actually stop any corn from going around the corner and being thrown into the chopper. And so, but yeah, that's just some of the modifications that I have done on this R72. And I can tell you one thing, it has made a big difference in, in green, green stem soybeans. Also, another thing that I did was right down here at the bottom of the cotton cave. Well, there's some trash right there, so you can't really see it. But uh, you see that big eye bolt right there. There's one, one on each side, and that's actually what that concave pivots on as you, as you adjust it between corn and soybeans. Is the, There's a little number graph inside there. In fact, I think that might be kind of the corner of it right there. What I did is I lowered the bottom of the concave all the way down to zero. So that has the bottom of the concave opened up pretty good. And so that stuff can come in, especially soybeans, as it starts out down here, it gets it's wide and it, it's like a wedge shape. It gets down pretty tight up here at the top. Because if you are running a CDF rotor, which is what I have, the closest point, we'll take that back, either a CDF and or what's called an open eight bar rotor, the closest point will be up here at the top. When you when you shut your concave down, up here is going to be the closest point of contact between the concave and your and the tops of your ass bars. And so um, opening that up all the way at the bottom worked great. Also on my CDF rotor, between a, between a CDF rotor and a regular eight bar, open eight bar rotor, the CDF rotor is one inch smaller diameter. And what I did to make up for that is I had, um, I had someone, you can kind of see it right there beneath that rasp bar, make up full length, half inch spacer bars. That way it, it brings it back out that one inch diameter again to back to normal diameter. And that actually, that helped, helped a lot as well. And so, yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask in the comments, but that's some of the things that I've done on this machine and it really made a big difference. And like I say, especially in green stem soybeans, where it's like a combining rope, and they're so tough and everything like that. So yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. So if you have any questions, like I say, post them in the comments. And um, that's just a little update of some of the things I have done, done to, to, to this machine to um, help make things transition through a whole lot better. And one thing on the rasp bars. I had four reverse bars that actually set just the opposite of what those are setting. I took those out and put forward bars in. I had a guy tell me that uh, each RAS bar takes approximately seven horsepower, and I had four of them. And so, let's just say, you're stick with round numbers, I had approximately 30 horsepower tied up running those running those reverse bars and so yeah like i say just wanted to show y'all what show y'all what i did and uh here's what i was talking about regarding those trimp bars the original hard surface bar on the rasp bars if you can kind of see it there yeah try and get it so that the light's not on too much yeah there we go yeah there we go those work great so hey, take care, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.